Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com, continuing my free course on Node.js and JavaScript for complete beginners. In this video, we're going to take a look at control characters, and we're going to see how we can write stuff to the console without creating new lines, which is what happens when we use console.log. And I'm inserting this at this point in the course because in the next video, I want to give you an exercise that will bring together a fair bit of what we've seen so far in the course. Um, but to complete that exercise, you're going to need a bit more information. So let's take a look at it. Um, first of all, I'm going to start all my scripts as usual with use, use strict. Now, if I write console.log here and output, for example, hello, what does this actually do? It actually outputs hello and then afterwards, it creates a new line character. So if we run this, let's run node control characters.js, which is my file. Try again. I hit the wrong button there. Now, now I've brought back the same command that was wrong. What I want is this. Okay. So if you look at what's happening here, we're outputting the text hello. And then you see that the prompt of my terminal appears again on the next line. And that's because console.log actually outputs what we call a new line character after any text that it outputs, meaning the next stuff you output is going to appear on the next line. We can maybe see that more clearly if we output two of them. And then if I run this script, you can see they're coming out on separate lines. And that's because we write hello, and then there's an, an invisible non-printing new line character after hello. And that causes the next hello to come out on the next line. And that has a new line character after it as well. And that means that my prompt character um, reappears on the next line after that. So these new line characters, they don't print, they don't, the non-printing characters, they don't display a symbol to you but they cause the next stuff you output to appear on the next line. And we can actually output those explicitly ourselves. Let's take a look. So um, I'll maybe comment this out with a multi-line comment, which is slash star and then star slash. So that's a multi-line comment, and it means that this is interpreted just as a comment and not as stuff to actually execute. So let's write console.log and we'll have a string. Let's write hi and then I'm going to put backslash n hi again like this. So backslash n is a non-printing character. It gets translated to a new line character. We have to have a backslash. This is called this is called a backslash, whereas this would be called a forward slash. And it's important that we have a backslash here. So this means output high, then create a new line character. In other words, go to the next line and then output high again. And then console.log automatically outputs a new line anyway after the stuff it's printed. So there'll be another new line after this second high. Let's try this. and we get high high on two different lines. We can also use um, backslash T. By the way, I'd, I don't have a semicolon here. JavaScript is designed to be pretty flexible in many ways. It often lets you get away without putting semicolons at the ends of lines, but you should put them in. It's good practice, I would say. In other words, it's best practice. It's what you should really do, because uh, sometimes your code won't work without these new lines. Let's try something else. So this time I'm going to write, let's write hello, hello. And this time I'll separate them with a tab character. Let's run this. So a tab character is like a sort of long space, basically. And we've got a sort of gap between these two hellos. And that's been created by this non-printing tab character, which we, we can create by using backslash T, 
within a string. And a good thing about tabs is that they help you line things up. They sort of move things to the next tab position, or that's often what they do. Other times they're basically equivalent to uh, typically four spaces or sometimes two spaces or whatever. So if I output console.log and we have cat slash t dog slash t mouse, and then on the next line, we have maybe apple and orange and banana. Then we can see our output is lined up. And as long as the strings aren't too long, typically you'll get lined up output. There's no real guarantee about it, but uh, in this case it's, it's work. So tabs are quite good often for lining things up like this. Um, now, what if we want to output some text and we don't want a new line after it? Because console.log will always add a new line after, after we've finished outputting our text, whether it contains new lines or whatever itself or not. So even just console.log by itself will create um, a new line. So let's write console.log with empty brackets. And you can see here that between after the last output and before my prompts is a blank line now. And that's just been created by this console.log. But sometimes we don't want that. So if we don't want it, we can use process. Let's press S because otherwise I think my autocomplete is going to unhelpfully mess this up. This is Visual Studio Code I'm using here. So if you write process.standardout.write and I write, let's say, um, uh, let's write lion. And then let's write something else with process.standardout.write, like tiger. And you'll be able to see the difference. So this is, this is again, it's just a way of writing to the console, but the results here are a bit different to console.log. So if I, if I run this now, we can see we've got lion and then tiger and process.standardout.write does not create any new line after it. So the next output that I do will be coming out right after the last input. And sometimes um, that is very helpful. Console.log is really intended for debugging. So it was originally implemented in browsers and typically you have development tools in your browser that you can activate somehow. And those contain a JavaScript console. And console.log, if you run JavaScript in a browser, which we'll look at later in this course, um, will output stuff to the, develop, the developer console to help you debug JavaScript that's running in browsers. But here we're just using it on a command line with the Node.js interpreter. And um, there it uh, works similarly to how it does in a browser. And it outputs text and then a new line after it. Um, now, process.standardout.write, you don't need to know what this is in order to use it. We're going to cover concepts that you need to know to understand this more later on. But briefly, so process and standard out are both objects. We call them objects. Process is actually a, I believe standard out is anyway, um, must be. Uh, process is actually an implicit object. So it's an object we say that's available to us uh, when we write Node.js programs. And again, you don't need to know what that is, but we call it an object, basically. Write is a method. In other words, it's a function or subroutine, a collection of statements that is attached to an object, in this case, the standard out object. And this standard out object lets us write to what we call the standard output stream. So we've got standard out and standard in. And um, standard out typically kind of represents a console. So we, we can call standard out a, it's a kind of stream. It's like an output stream. So rather than, rather than a stream of water, let's say it's a stream of data and we can write things to it. We can write data to it and then it will usually appear on the console. So you don't need to, to know that to actually use it though. 
that's just to begin to get you used to some sort of ideas and terminology that we'll look at later. So you can use um, control characters if, you know, in strings that you're going to write with process.standard out as well. Like if, if I were to put, for example, slash t or slash n there, you'll see the results of it. Let's um, put slash t after lion and slash n after tiger. And if we actually output this, then we've got lion and then a tab character. And then after tiger, there's a new line so that my console prompt is reappearing on the next line now. If you want to output numbers with process.standardout.write, there's a bit of a twist. So let's try that. Let's have a, a variable, let's say. So let's say let value equal seven. So we've got a, a, I've declared a variable called value and I've initialized it to the value seven. And I'll use process.standardout.write and we'll output value what does this do? Let's, let's run it. In fact, it gives me a error trace or stack trace. Um, so console.log, because it's intended for debugging, in many ways it's very flexible. It will output numbers, it will output all kinds of things. Process.standardout.write is in many ways less flexible. It won't output numbers, it will only output strings. So this error here, if we, if we look at the top of it, actually says the chunk argument must be one of type string or buffer. It's not, it's not liking the fact that this is a number. But we can convert a variable that refers to a number, we can convert it to a string using the toString method. And that looks like this. If I write value, so still within, within these round brackets of write, if I write value dot two dot two string and let's put empty round brackets in there because this is actually a method itself then that actually works let's try it and now it works and we've got seven there if i wanted to get this single line to have a new line after it um well i could just use console.log but you can concatenate strings together as well so here i could write plus and I could have a string that only contains a new line, for example, and that will create a new line afterwards. Now you can see my prompt is now coming out on the line after that seven. Okay, so we're going to be using these ideas, or at least some of them, probably all of what we've seen here, in the exercise that I'll give you in the next video. So the thing to do if you are a beginner is practice this, try all of this stuff, Try process.standardout.write, try writing numbers with it as well as strings, and try embedding control characters, backslash t and backslash n within your strings, and see what it does. Check that you get the idea of all this, and you can use it to sort of arrange text on the screen. And then I'll give you an exercise in the next video. So until next time, happy coding.